Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video, renowned financial analyst Lynette Tsang delves into the vulnerabilities of the U.S. banking system, shedding light on critical indicators that suggest an impending crisis. Tsang, known for her astute observations and in-depth analysis, dissects the intricacies of the current financial landscape. In this video, we'll explore key insights she provides, highlighting the potential risks and consequences for the broader economy. Zhang begins by emphasizing the ongoing vulnerability of the U.S. banking system, pointing to potential losses in security portfolios and the risk of weakening capital levels. A crucial aspect she underscores is the fire sale vulnerability, where banks might be compelled to sell underwater bonds at a loss in the event of a run on the bank. Despite assurances from institutions that they intend to hold such assets to maturity, Zhang dismisses this as mere rhetoric, asserting that a crisis could force a fire sale resulting in significant losses. One of the key metrics she discusses is the liquidity stress ratio, which has been on the rise since early 2022. Zhang attributes this increase to a shift from liquid to less liquid assets and a transition from stable to unstable funding. This shift, she argues, is not unique to specific banks, but is a pervasive trend, including the Federal Reserve Bank. Zhang highlights the precarious nature of broker deposits in the banking sector, which can swiftly leave the system further exacerbating liquidity stress. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. The U.S. banking system is still, still vulnerable. You think? Losses in security portfolios risk weakening capital levels. So, there are key pieces inside of this report. Fire sale vulnerability, meaning the, the, that banks would be forced to sell those underwater bonds. Oops, I usually do it this way. They're underwater bonds at a loss. That's a fire sale. If there is a run on the bank and they're forced to sell those holdings that they're telling you that, oh, they're not going to lose any money on it because they're going to hold them to maturity. That's garbage. If they are forced to and it remains elevated. Yeah, it should remain ele elevated. Liquidity stress ratio has increased since early 2022, driven by a shift from liquid to less liquid assets. That means things that are harder to sell and from stable to unstable funding. Look at what's happening in the treasury market, right? This is true in, in all of the banks, including the Federal Reserve Bank. So that means that it's gone from strong hands that can hold on to it to weaker hands. And in the banking sector, I just told you last week, about their use of broker deposits, right? And I told you at that time that those can run very quickly from the banks. So the fact that the banks are still vulnerable with liquidity stress radio, ratio this high, uh, yeah. Less liquid assets, meaning harder to sell assets, which means bigger discounts if they have to sell them. And from stable funding, deposits and other things, to unstable funding, those brokered deposits, which can leave the system very rapidly. And run vulnerability index shows an increase since early 2022 due to an increase in leverage, so debt upon debt upon debt inside of the banking system, but also due to increases in unstable funding and illiquid assets. What do you think? The markets are flying today. Why? Because they see a crisis and they see the Fed having to pivot and drop those interest rates down. And that means that they get to buy and participate lots of free money. Woohoo! Except that didn't fix the problems before. It only created more, more problems. And it takes us on the verge of a hyperinflationary depression. Make no mistake about it. I hope I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I know it. It happens every time. And if something's happened over 4,800 times, every single time when we're doing the same thing, 
Is this time going to be different? No, they need a huge crisis to shift us into the next iteration of money that we work for that they control. The Run Vulnerability Index, according to Sang, has been escalating since early 2022, driven not only by increased leverage within the banking system, but also by rises in unstable funding and illiquid assets. She draws attention to the use of broker deposits by banks, underlining the potential rapid outflow and its implications for the overall stability of the financial system. Moving on to the March 2023 banking crisis, Zhang underscores its role in exposing the vulnerability of the banking sector to sudden interest rate hikes. She refers to the events of March and April 2020 as illustrative of the fragility in food, water, energy security barterability, wealth, preservation, community, and shelter. Zank urges viewers to recognize the systemic challenges and emphasizes the urgency of addressing them. This is money that they don't control. This is what you need. The March 2023 banking crisis highlighted the vulnerability of the banking se sector to a sudden rise in interest rates. And what happened in March and April of 2020 showed you the fragility of food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. So please, people, get it done. Because shockingly, the system is falling apart. And what is the choice of the central bankers? The Fed, the BOA, and the BOH hold, BOJ, should have, I'm sorry, Bank of Japan, hold rates steady. So can you see how they're between a rock and a hard place? They keep raising rates. You're going to see more unemployment, which is what they want. It's what they stated that they wanted from the beginning. It's not greedflation that has taken hold. It's inflation that has taken hold. But hey, let's have higher unemployment. Let's have a recession. Because honestly, you guys, there is only one way to fight inflation, and that is with deflation. And only one way to fight deflation, and that is with inflation. But when you are at the end, you have no tools to work with. And that's why I'm talking about a hyperinflationary depression. And you can call me crazy, but I don't know anybody else that's studied this stuff the way I have. There are lots of smart people out there. I'm not saying that there aren't or that nobody else knows this. I just haven't really met them. That's all I'm saying. And my mother always said, if it's true, you can say it. Powell hints, Fed is done with hikes and pivot cheered by markets. Really? The question now is, should we hike more? I mean, it's a freaking joke. He knows he's out of control. He knows the whole system is out of control. And when the markets hear that, the two-year year plunges as hiking cycle nears an end and Wall Street cheers, whoop-de-doo. But are they really saying that they're headed back to that 2% target? And what does that really mean? That just means that the loss of purchasing power happens more slowly, but it still happens. I mean, let us not forget 2020 Bolivar bill to a 500 million Bolivar bill and you can't buy crap with it. Has more value as an empanada wrapper than it does as money. Shocker. Goldilocks trade lifts stocks as yields tumble. Market rep. Oh, U.S. hiring cools to 150,000, but unemployment rises to 3.9. Hmm. The discussion takes a turn towards central bank decisions, focusing on the Federal Reserve's pivot in response to market dynamics. Zhang is critical of the central bank's actions, arguing that lowering interest rates may temporarily appease the markets but ultimately exacerbate existing issues. She contends that the current trajectory places the economy on the brink of a hyperinflationary depression, a scenario she claims to have occurred over 4,800 times in history when similar patterns were repeated. As Zhang analyzes Powell's hints at discontinuing rate hikes and the market's positive response, she remains skeptical about the long-term consequences. She questions whether the Fed's decision to hold rates steady is a sign of control or an acknowledgement of being between a rock and a hard place. Zhang argues that the dilemma faced by central banks, 
either raising rates and causing more unemployment or maintaining lower rates and risking hyperinflation, illustrates the depth of the systemic issues at play. The U.S. economy showed its first cracks. Well, that's because they don't know how to look because it's been showing a lot of cracks. Uh, la, 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 for now, all is well. And bull is cool. Looks liberating for a considerable number of investors. These are not investors. These are traders because everything, everything, everything has been turned into a trading market. Wall Street is too big to fail. You and I, mm, we're just about the right size. So you need to become your own central banker. That is what I've done. Have they conquered inflation? No, they have not. Have they positioned for massive deflation? Yes, they have. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. And some are saying don't trust the stock market rally. And I would have to absolutely agree because fundamentals around higher for longer interest rates have not changed. Now, he's not saying that they won't keep it higher for longer, but the fundamentals have not changed. We are at the end of this currency's life cycle. And in order to shift into the new reset currency, the CBDCs, the full surveillance economy, and the absolutely controlled individual loss of all of your personal freedoms, all of your rights, not just for you, but for your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. You really want us to go back to feudal times when you just have a handful of people that own everything and everybody else leases? Because frankly, I love my family. That's not okay. And by the way, I consider you my family. You are who I work for. Make no mistake about that. And I am pissed off. Despite market pricing, there remains a significant chance the Fed will be pushed into another rate hike. Because if they keep it here, if they lower the rates down, which now the markets are going whoop de doo by July, we're going to have lower rates. But that also means that we are in deep doo-doo in the economy. And, and I'm going to tell you, I personally believe that the hyperinflation has already begun, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why in this major key pattern shift. I'm going to show you why I say that. Well, at least he admits the concept of U.S. soft landing is dead. No crap, Sherlock. It's been dead. There is no such thing as a soft landing. Maybe for some, because they're properly positioned. But not for most. For most, it is always a very hard landing.